Hey guys, it's Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and today Rachel from Just Another Button Company is going to show us how you hand dye all of their beautiful buttons. Okay, so I'm going to dye some Orange Glad Party Mix buttons. Those are the buttons that are found inside our party packs. They come in 35 colors, and Fat Quarter Shop has all 35 packs. I'm going to start with, these are my supplies, I'll just show you everything that I work with. Um, I start with white buttons because we add all of the color ourselves. Um, so this is what undyed party mix looks like. And I call it party mix because it's not yet in the package. It just becomes a party pack when it goes inside that pretty packaging. These are my undyed buttons. Here are my dyes. Today I'm going to be dyeing orange glad. That's what this dye is in this jar here. Um, I've pre-mixed my recipe and put it into this jar so that I have the proper proportions of orange and red and yellow mixed together to get the right shade. Uh, this is a strainer that I'll use to put the buttons in and that's how I'll dip them into the pot. I'm going to use this measuring cup here to mix my dye with hot water and that will help dissolve the dye. Um, I'm going to stir it up with my whisk. Or when I have my dye mixed up, I'm going to use this strainer and these coffee filters to actually put the dye into the water. And obviously I'm going to wear gloves to protect my hands. I have a plastic sheet on my workspace so that I don't get dye all over this pretty cutting table. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to use is spoons for stirring the buttons. Okay, so I'm ready to mix up my dye because my water is all heated up. So I'm going to dip out some hot water. And I'm going to unscrew my jar with my dye. And I'm going to put in some dye. Usually I measure this out with a measuring spoon so I know about how much to put in based on like one batch. Um, so I'm usually a little more accurate than this. but um, Okay, and then as you can see there's kind of some splotchiness on the edge of the of the uh, measuring cup and there's some pieces of salt floating in the dye. So I wouldn't want to dump this into my pot right now because then it would leave spots on my buttons. So I'm going to use the whisk and I'm going to mix up my dye. My goal is to get all the salt to dissolve, which is not always possible. All right, when I feel, I feel like I've got it mostly mixed up and dissolved, I am going to take an extra step to make sure I avoid spots, and I'm going to strain my dye. Okay, so this is how I strain my dye. I have just a mesh strainer here, and I line it with a coffee filter, so that's two, two fail-safes to keep me from you know, having spots on my buttons. I really don't like to have spotty buttons. <laughs> so I'm going to take my dye and I'm going to slowly pour it through the coffee filter. Now sometimes if I think I might have a dye that's mixed up and it's really concentrated and I don't want my buttons to die too fast, I'll just pour in part of the dye. And then as you can see it kind of gets stuck in the filter. So sometimes I have to whisk it a little bit while it's in here just to get it to go through. Sometimes I add more hot water to the basket while it's, while it's filtering through. This is actually kind of fun too because it gives you a little peek at what the dye looks like because it's on the filter. So as you can see this is a pretty reddish orange color. Alright, now I'm ready to put my buttons into my dye. So I going to pour my white button into my strainer basket and I'm going to slowly lower them in. I don't want to splatter and I'm going to mix them up real fast and pull them up to check just to make sure it's not going to go too fast. And I've got a little bit of color but not much yet so I didn't over concentrate my dye. Dip them back down and stir them a little bit more. Pull them up to check. We've got a nice orange, light orange color going so far. I have my button samples to the side here so I know what color I'm aiming for. And I'll lower them back in. 
So different button colors take different amounts of time to dye. Uh, for example, yellows take a long time. Um, oranges and reds usually go faster. check again and see how we're doing. Oh, now we're, we're very orange. Still not quite as dark as this button here. I'm going to compare the two buttons and this is not ready yet. If a color takes too long to get to the right spot, I will add more dye to the pot. And in order to do that, I make sure I take my buttons out first so that I'm not pouring dye directly on top of the buttons because when they make contact with the dye, they change immediately. So if I pour my dye right on top, it's gonna hit the buttons that are on the top first. So if those become too dark on top before I can stir it up, then my batch is gonna be unevenly dyed. All right, so let's pull it up and see See how we're doing. Okay. So I just dry it off a little bit on my apron and then I can compare it to my sample. All right, so this is the button that I'm wanting to achieve the color for and this is the button that I have right now. So as you can see, it's a very similar color it's just not quite dark enough yet, so I would put it back in the pot and keep going. Okay, this looks like it's just about finished up, so I'm going to pull out my buttons. And this is the point at which I would rinse them in water and lay them out on a towel to dry. But for now, I'm just going to show you. This is our beautiful orange color that we ended up with. So this color is Orange Glad, and again, this kind of this kind of mixture of buttons is called party mix, and you can find find it in a party pack. Uh, 